Greetings from Surendra Dental College and Research Institute, Sriganganagar. I, Dr. Suruchi Janeja, welcomes you all to the second lecture of the series, Pediatric Endodontics, and we will be discussing pulpotomy in this lecture. First of all, let us see what are the definitions of pulpotomy. It has been defined by healing, fin, and ABD, but however, the most accepted definition remains by <clears throat> American Academy of Pediatric Dentistry in 1998, wherein it was defined as amputation of affected, infected coronal portion of the dental pulp, preserving the vitality and function of the remaining part of the radicular pulp. The objective of pulpotomy is to remove the inflamed and infected coronal pulp surgically at the site of the exposure, thus preserving the vitality of the radicular pulp and allowing it to heal. The rationale behind this procedure is that the radicular pulp, which is healthy and capable of healing, is preserved after the surgical amputation of the infected coronal pulp to preserve the vitality of the radicular pulp and the removal of completely inflamed or infected coronal portion of the pulp and thus maintaining the tooth in a physiological condition. The indications of pulpotomy are firstly, when there is a mechanical pulp exposure in a vital primary tooth, the vital teeth which are considered larger for a pulp capping to be done, in the treatment of pulpally involved vital primary teeth, where the clinical manifestations of the inflammatory response are confined only to the coronal portion of the pulp. The radicular pulp is free of pulpitis. There's history of only spontaneous pain. The hemorrhage from the amputation site is pale red and can be easily controlled. It can also be indicated in the treatment of fractured vital permanent teeth where the pulp exposure is less than 1 mm square with the time elapsed less than 72 hours. Radiographically, the tooth must possess at least two thirds of its root length. There should not be any evidence of internal resorption or interradicular bone loss or any peripycalation. The contraindications for pulpotomy are severe toothaches at night, spontaneous pain, mobility, excess of hemorrhage at the time of the exposure, serious exudates from the exposure, the presence of swelling or any fistula. Radiographically, the widening of lamina dura, external root resorption, they contraindicate the procedure of pulpotomy. Any peripycal or interradicular radiolucency indicating the inflammation which has extended beyond the coronal pulp, they again contraindicate the procedure of pulpotomy. Similarly, internal root resorption, pulp calcification and the tooth nearing to its exfoliation are contraindications. Coming to the classification of pulpotomy, first it can be classified as devitalization. Second is preservation and third is regenerative. The first one that is devitalization is also called as mummification, cauterization. It is intended to destroy or just mummify the pulp so that the physiological processes of the pulp in that area are arrested. The various uh, types of uh, devitalization pulpotomy according to the sittings can be single sitting or two sittings. Single sitting involves the using of formoprosol electrosurgery and laser, whereas two-stage pulpotomy includes the Gaisi trio paste, Eslix formaldehyde and paraform devitalizing paste. Now the second type of pulpotomy that is preservation also called as minimal devitalization and non-inductive. It means to maintain the maximum vital tissue with no induction of reparative dentine and the agents that are employed for the same are zinc oxide eugenol, glutaraldehyde and ferric sulfate. In regeneration, there is a formation of the dentinal bridge and the agents that are employed for the same are calcium hydroxide, BMP that is more bone morphogenic protein, MTA, biodentine, enriched collagen, freeze-dried bone and osteogenic protein. Another type of pulpotomy is also called as non-vital pulpotomy or mortar pulpotomy. 
and here the beechwood chrysol is employed for the same but however it is a very controversial procedure so should not be employed now coming to the clinical procedure of the pricotomy first first of all profound local anesthesia is achieved followed by isolation by rubber dam <clears throat> since formoprazole is a caustic agent so to avoid the contact of formoprazole to any of the soft tissues rubber dam serves the best purpose it also prevents the contamination and allows a proper visibility of the operating field after that caries removal is done using number 330 burr with high speed hand piece and on the approaching of the pulpal floor the slow spleed round burr is used it is followed by access opening that is conventional access opening or deroofing of the pulp chamber after the whole of the coronal pulp is exposed it is excised with the help of either a sharp spoon excavator or a slow speed round burr all the tissue tags or the pulpal tags should be completely removed otherwise the bleeding will not be controlled from this side leading to improper fixation of the tissue after all the chamber is cleaned of the pulpal tissue the chamber is uh, irrigated with saline and no air blowing should be done to prevent any damage to the remaining radicular pulp after this hemostasis is achieved using a sterile cotton pellet which is saturated with saline and placed with minimal pressure for 3 minutes after the hemostasis is achieved the, uh, the another pellet is taken which is moistened with formoprazole and the excess is removed with the help of another dry cotton pellet this is applied onto the root orifices for maximum contact and it is waited for 4 minutes to achieve the hemostasis sorry fixation the fixation once done it appears as blackish brown discoloration on the pulp stumps interim restoration is followed with zinc oxide eugenol and then post endodontic restoration with a permanent restoration and stainless steel crown this picture shows the procedure of pulpotomy the first figure shows the access opening second shows the removal of the coronal pulp the third one shows the cotton pellet application which is uh, saturated with formoprazole and third one shows the post endodontic restoration Now let us see what are the pulpotomy medicaments and what are the ideal requirements. First of all, any pulpotomy agent which is employed should be bactericidal. It should be harmless to the pulp and surrounding tissues. It should promote the healing of the radicular pulp and should not interfere with the physiological process of root resorption. These are the various materials commonly employed for pulpotomy: formoprazole, glutaraldehyde, ferric sulfate, calcium hydroxide, and MTA. Formoprazole was introduced by Buckley in 1909, 1904, and it has served as gold standard for in this procedure. Sweet was the one in 1930 who formulated multi-visit technique. Then Doyle also advocated two sitting procedure. Wenham in 1967 proposed a 15 second procedure for the fixation of the pulp the currently used concept uses 4 minutes and the closest to it was given by spedding <coughs> who advocated 5 minute protocol composition of the formoprazole which is used is chrysol 35% glycerol 15% formaldehyde 19% water 31% the preparation of this formula consists of 1/5 concentration of the buckley's form formula is used it is prepared by mixing three parts of glycerin with one part of distilled water and this is what forms the diluents now four parts of this diluents is mixed with one part of buckley's form of salt so as to result in one is 1 by 5th concentration of the buckley's formula 
the mechanism of action of formoprosol it prevents tissue autolysis by bonding to the proteins this bonding is of peptide groups of side chain amino acids and it is a irreversible process without changing any basic structure of the protein molecules of the pulp this figure shows the histological changes which result after formoprosol pulpotomy immediately on application of formoprosol the pulp becomes fibrous and acidophilic after 7 to 14 days three zones can be seen histologically the first one is a broad eosinophilic zone of fixation the second one is a broad pale staining zone of atrophy with poor cellular definition and the third one is the zone of inflammation extending apically into the normal tissues after one year there is progressive apical movement of these zones and after one year only the acid acidophilic zone is left at the end there are certain toxicity concerns of formoprosol which have discouraged the clinicians from using this and in certain countries it is even banned there is local toxicity of this uh, material as such systemic distribution is also a concern because of its high molecular weight and the uh, sorry the small molecular size which leads to apical uh, penetration and thus entering this formoprosol molecule into the systemic distribution another concern is the mutagenicity genotoxicity and the cytotoxicity the criteria of success is according to these parameters there should be no internal resorption of the root adjacent to the area there should be no evidence of external root resorption there should not be any radiolucency at the bifurcation trifurcation in and in the peripical areas and there should not be any pain after the procedure another pulpotomy agent is glutaraldehyde which was introduced as a as an alternative to formoprosol because of its toxicity concerns it is an excellent disinfectant and a strong pungent odor the shelf life of glutaraldehyde is limited now this fi this figure shows the mechanism of action and the number of layers formed is logically after its application first is a zone of fixation followed by a zone of pro inflammatory fibroblasts and the vital pulp in the apical area the advantages of glutaraldehyde include superior fixation its antimicrobial nature less necrosis of the pulp tissue less dystrophic calcification in the pulp canals because of its larger molecular size the chances of systemic distribution are very low therefore it is a definitely advantage over formoprosol its low tissue binding and it's re ready uh, more readily metabolized and thus it is eliminated in urine and expired gases the disadvantages are the short shelf life and it has to be freshly prepared for each use quickly summarizing the comparison between formoprosol and glutaraldehyde the tissue fixation in glutaraldehyde is better it is non reversible it is an glutaraldehyde is a better antimicrobial agent than formoprosol the vital tissue which remains after one year following the use of formoprosol is very less whereas in glutaraldehyde a more amount of vital tissue is remaining at the apex the clinical success is almost similar however toxicity of formoprosol is considerably higher than glutaraldehyde ferric sulfate it is commonly used coagulative and hemostatic agent and it was again suggested as an alternative to formoprosol by fee et al in 1991 its application time is 15 seconds and it is used in the concentration of 15.5% the ferric sulfate forms ferric ion protein complex which when in contact with the blood seals off the cut vessels mechanically thus resulting in hemostasis this protein complex becomes coagulated and forms a plug which occludes the capillary orifices it also prevents the formation of blood clot 
which minimizes the chances of chronic inflammation and internal resorption. Another material that is used for pulpotomy is calcium hydroxide. Since it is highly alkaline and there are uh, reports of internal resorption, therefore it is not recommended as a pulpotomy medicament for primary teeth, but it is definitely the material of choice for direct pulp capping and pulpotomy technique in the permanents only. <clears throat> A very promising material for pulpotomy is MTA, which was introduced by Tor Benajar and Shivian in 1999. It is a combination of refined Portland cement with bismuth oxide. It has certain advantages like lack of internal resorption, thus it can be used for even primary teeth. It is biocompatible. It has good sealing ability it, and it promotes the formation of heart tissues. The disadvantage is the increased cost. Other non-pharmacological methods which are used for pulpotomy are electrocautery or also called as electrofulguration. It was uh, first used in 1957 and Mac also reported many case reports in 1967 using this method. This procedure carbonizes and denatures the pulp tissue producing a layer of coagulative necrosis and this layer acts as a barrier between the thin base material and the healthy radicular tissue. The procedure of electrocautery uh, in pulpotomy is <clears throat> first of all as conventional LA isolation, removal of the coronal pulp and hemostasis. After hemostasis is achieved the knife edge electrode is placed slightly above the tissue about 1 to 2 mm above. The electrical arch is allowed to bridge the gap between the first pulp stems for the first one second followed by a cooling off period for 5 seconds. This single current application for one second is done in each orifice in rotation so as to build up of any heat and it is repeated three times for each orifice. After completion of this procedure, the pulp stems must appear dry and blackened and this is followed by the routine restoration with zinc oxide regional and stainless steel crown. Another recent advance is the laser pulpotomy which was first introduced by Shoji et al. He used carbon dioxide laser in pulpotomy other lasers which are used for pulpotomy procedures are Nadia laser, Calium arsenide laser, Argon laser, Erbium Getrium Aluminium Garnet laser. The pulpal responses seen after the laser pulpotomy are graded as follows and this is histological gradation grade 0 to grade 3. Grade 0 is no evidence of deviation from the normal histology. Grade 1 is minimal change from the normal histology characterized by loss of orientation of odontoblast, edema and extravascular leukocytes and RBCs. Grade 2 is focal necrosis in the odontoblastic layer in addition to the findings of the grade 1. And grade 3 is generalized coagulation type necrosis of all the pulpal elements. Other experimental pulpotomy agents which are being used in research are Enriched collagen, chondroitin sulfate, sodium hyaluronidate, and dimethyl subamidate. Thank you so much, and I hope this lecture would be an informative and useful to you. Thank you.